A new survey from Bankrate has found that just 39% of Americans could afford to pay for an emergency or surprise bill totaling $1,000 or more. We have Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate.com here with us for more. Greg, it's always great chatting with you. This is a little bit of a, of a depressing headline, I, I should say. I, I want to start here. You know, we hear a lot that consumer balance sheets right now are strong, that's, that people saved quite a bit of money throughout this pandemic. I'm wondering how you reconcile that with the survey results, which is showing that a majority of folks can't even afford to pay for an emergency if it's $1,000 or more. Well, we hear a lot about this K-shaped consumer recovery, Kristen, and I think the results here really reflect that, that, uh, you know, the numbers are down slightly from last year, maybe not as much as we would have thought at first blush, uh, reflecting the fact that, yes, while it was devastating to the finances of those that lost jobs or suffered income disruptions, at the same time, there are millions of Americans whose household balance sheets, as you noted, are stronger now than they were a year ago between stimulus checks, maybe extended unemployment benefits, money that got put away in savings. They have a little bit more put away net net. Things did not deteriorate uh, in an appreciable way relative to where we were this time last year. So those folks uh, that can't afford those emergency bills, how would they plan on handling it uh, if, if one landed on their doorstep? Is this turning to, I think, credit cards? It, it would probably be one of the first things that they would reach for. What did your survey find? Uh, yeah, borrowing really did kind of bubble up as, as the most common way that people would do that. Credit cards did top the list. Borrowing from family members or friends, uh, some even say taking a personal loan. Now, one area we did see an increase relative to a year ago, uh, more people now said that they would cut back on spending on other things in order to cover that expense than we've seen in previous years. I think this, too, a vestige of 2020, where we had this forced curtailing of spending in some categories uh, that I think has created an environment where people are saying, like, well, OK, I guess if I had to, I could I could cut back on this or I could do without this for a while. Now, I'm wondering if this survey's results uh, really point to you or, or really maybe underscore the real need for more than those $600 stimulus checks. President-elect Biden actually tweeting out a little bit earlier that $600 isn't enough. We need $2,000 stimulus checks. That's a measure that Congress is considering. Uh, do you think as well that perhaps Americans need more support, perhaps continued support throughout this pandemic? Americans need more emergency savings, and that we've seen that with them when the economy was good. We certainly see that uh, coming out of this very deep recession. So, uh, yes, this, the stimulus money has definitely helped sustain households and small businesses. Uh, the fact that households and businesses went as long without that as they did, who knows how many that pushed over the edge. I think more would certainly offer uh, the opportunity for a lot of households to put away a little bit of savings or pad what they already have but it's not gonna be a panacea for either the savings equation or you know, the, the type of spending that we need to reflect the economy. So you actually just touched on it a little bit, Greg, and I wanna ask you about that because what I did find interesting in this survey is that while I was surprised by that 39% number being able to handle an emergency, it's kind of in line with numbers that we've been seeing every year since, you know, back since 2014. So why aren't we seeing those numbers increase, that more people are able to afford that emergency, especially given the economic strength of 2019 and, and even into the start of 2020? Yeah, throughout that decade-long economic expansion, we didn't see the needle move very much in terms of people being able to stockpile more savings, more people being able to afford that unplanned expense. Uh, stagnant incomes, a, a large part of that. Uh, that was a big obstacle for many to being able to pad that savings. And then, of course, the recession comes along and it puts a dent uh, in the, the savings situation of, of those that are, are most likely to be able to least afford it, the young uh, and the lower income households. I wanted to ask you, Greg, I have about 30 seconds left here with you. How does age play into this? Are younger folks doing better or worse? Uh, the, the millennials in particular are less likely to have that emergency savings, more likely to, to do borrowing to, to cover it, but more optimistic that their financial situation is going to improve over the next 12 months. All right. Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate.com. Thank you so much for breaking down all of those survey results with us. Thanks, Kristen.